Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. In the last couple of videos, I introduced you to audio spectrum analyzers and explained why they are so reliable for mixing. In this video, I will quickly explain how you can go about using spectrum analyzers in your mixing process to help make sure each of your sounds is just as loud as it should be and has the right frequency balance to achieve the best mix possible. So the key to using spectrum analyzers to help with your mixing is to do reference mixing. Reference mixing is where you use a track that you like the mix of to help you make your mixing decisions in hopes of achieving a similar mix to that reference track. Um, later in this section, I will be explaining and exploring reference mixing in much more detail. So if you're not sure what that is, you'll get a little bit of an idea from this video but you'll also get a much better understanding of reference mixing a little later on in this tutorial series. But basically, with reference mixing, you're trying to achieve a similar mix to that of a reference track. It seems like a simple concept, but as a beginner, it may be difficult to accurately reproduce the loudness and frequency balance of the different sounds in a song using only your ears. And this is where using spectrum analyzers can be very helpful. You know, ideally, it's best to use your ears, but as a beginner, especially, and you know, in, with certain problem areas, uh, using spectrums is uh, very, very helpful in achieving the best mix possible. So I recommend you use both a spectrum analyzer like Span and a spectrogram if possible. This is because they each display the same information differently. And you know, while each of them gives you a decent idea of what's happening in an audio signal, both of them together can provide you with a much more complete picture of what's happening in a mix. So let's play a song and look at these spectrums to see what's going on. So you might be able to see that there's quite a bit of information available to you from you know, the combination of these two spectrums. The difference between the two is um, spectrum analyzers like Fox and Go Span give you a better indication of you know, the levels, uh, you know, the more specific levels of different frequency bands because they're actually presented on this graph. Um, whereas with this one, they're presented as colors, you know, which isn't quite as specific. Um, but this one makes up for it in its display of time. And because of the way it displays time, you can really get an idea of what's happening in the track. Okay. So I've just um, held each of these to kind of see what's going on in them. And you can see that uh, in terms of time, it doesn't really show the time. It just froze it at a specific point in time. But this one, you know, you can kind of see the lead. Uh, the pitch sliding lead is right here. Uh, you can see the kicks. You can see, you know, how the pitch of the kicks changes over time. Um, you can see this one is pitched higher than these ones. Uh, you can see the hi-hats up here. And so, you know, 
This one just helps you get a better idea of the levels of independent instruments. Um, well, this one helps you get a better idea of, you know, the frequency bands, uh, the specific levels of them. Like, you know, you can't really say how loud the space is specifically from just looking at the color. Uh, but here you can see, you know, it's at minus 39, um, at least in this snapshot. Uh, you know, normally you're not going to use a snapshot like this too often while mixing. Um, you're going to look at the actual, uh, what's happening in real time. Um, bass is something that a lot of people have trouble with. So, you know, if I was using uh, these spectrums to help me get a better idea of just how loud I want my bass to be, assuming this song here is my reference song, I can play it. Um, I'm actually going to edit this so that the average time is faster. Uh, you know, you can make it a higher average time or a lower average time depending on what you prefer. And for setting the bass, I like to use um, a lower average time. So when I play it, you'll see... You know, the bass is pretty steady at about minus 34 on here. So if I wanted my bass to be just as loud, I could set it to be, you know, minus 34. And I'd be pretty confident that it would be at about the same level. Um, especially if my bass is at the same frequency. Because you could see when it jumped up in frequency, it peaked uh, a fair bit higher. So frequency is something you have to keep in mind. Um, when you are, you know, reference mixing bass using uh, the spectrum analyzers. So this type of spectrum is very, very useful in helping you um, make sure your bass isn't too loud or isn't too quiet. And if you look closely, you can kind of see some of the harmonics um, after that fundamental. But uh, for the specific harmonics, this uh, spectrogram is a little bit more useful. Because, um, oops. Because you can see uh, when that kick plays on its own, you get a pretty good idea of what harmonics are present. And even though you don't get a specific reading of the level like you do over here, you can you know, get a rough idea just by looking at the colors of the harmonics. So, you know, if you use both of these together, um, you should be able to get uh, pretty close on the levels and the harmonics of your basses, um, if not perfect. You know, and I think this is really helpful because a lot of people do have trouble getting the levels of their bass right uh, just using their ears and their monitors or headphones, uh, especially uh, beginners primarily. And in addition to the level of the kick, um, sometimes you can get the level of the punch of a snare as well. Uh, you can hear in this track it doesn't really have uh, a fat snare or anything. You know, it has a snap instead of a snare. Uh, but with this example here, you know, it does have a fatter snare. and. It actually shows up on the spectrum, you can see. Um, I'm going to slow down that average time a little bit, uh, just increase it a little bit so you can see it better. Yeah, you can see right here uh, the snare uh, kind of jumps up in level. So that can be useful if you're trying to, you know, get a specific level for the punch of your snare. Um, but, you know, in the case of a song where you have a snap instead of a snare, or a snare that doesn't have a big body like it does in this track, um, you can actually use this one to get somewhat of an idea. Uh, I'm going to find a more uh, quiet part of the song. So, 
So it's a little bit messy up because of that saw, but you can see the snap is happening right here. Um, so you know it doesn't give you a super specific idea, but if you make your snap about a similar color, it'll be about as loud. Um, but ideally, again, you'd be using your ears. You just use these as a little bit of help if you need it. Um, you know, if you're very new to mixing or if you don't fully trust your ears or something, uh, they can just help you out a little bit more. So that's pretty much, um, you know, the basics of it. That's pretty much how you would be using uh, these, you know, spectrum analyzers while mixing. You'd just be reference mixing, uh, trying to use your ears as much as possible and just kind of double checking with these spectrums to see, um, okay, yeah, my bass is peaking in a similar level uh, as it is in the reference track. And, you know, my lead looks about as loud on this spectrum as the lead in the reference track. And all, all that kind of stuff. And just using both of these together uh, can really help give you an idea of, you know, how loud individual instruments are uh, in a track. But of course, as always, it's best to use your ears as much as possible. And like I said before, what I've been talking about in this video is all directly related to reference mixing. Uh, so I'm just covering it shortly, briefly in this video. Uh, in you know the next few videos in this section of the tutorial, I will be going into a lot more depth about reference mixing. And I even um, reference mix an example song completely. So uh, you know, if you really want to see reference mixing in action, I definitely uh, suggest you watch those videos.